Hello everyone. So, today welcome to the third lecture of module 2 and in today lecture we will discuss one of the most popular technique for solving nonlinear equation. This technique is called Newton reaction method. So, basically why I am saying this technique is quite popular because this technique is easy to apply. Moreover, the convergence rate of this technique is faster than the earlier discussed techniques like bisection method, regular falsi method or second method. In particular, this method is having sec, uh, quadratic order of convergence which is higher than bisection method which is linear in terms of convergence and second method which is ha having super linear that is there in the convergence rate p is around 1.61 that is golden ratio. So, in this method we use this formula for solving the nonlinear equation suppose f of x equals to 0 is a nonlinear equation and x 0 is the initial solution which is given to us. The next solution can be obtained by this formula x of n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x n divided by f prime x n. Here f prime x n is the derivative of f prime x, f x n and x 0 is an initial guess and we will find the sub subsequent iterates of the sequence x n using this formula. Geometrically this formula can be described as let we are having a function like this. So, it is my x axis, it is y axis and this is the curve f x. As I told you that we are having an initial solution, let us say this is my initial solution x naught and the root of this equation f x equals to 0 is here let us say this point is x star. So, I will start with this x naught and using the formula of Newton reaction method I need to converge here. So, what I will do if I draw a perpendicular here this point is x naught f x naught on the curve y equals to f x. Now, what I do I will draw a tangent at this particular point and the tangent line intersect at intersect the x axis let us say at x 1. So, this will become the next iterate of the sequence x n. If I consider this angle as theta, so tangent on the curve f x at this point x naught can be written by f prime x naught and it is equals to tan theta. So, if this angle is theta in this right angle triangle, I can write this equals to f x naught means this distance upon this distance. So, this will become x naught minus x 1. Now, I can write it x naught minus x 1 equals to f x naught upon f prime x naught or x 1 equals to x naught minus f x naught upon 
f prime x naught. So, in this way I will get the first iterate of the sequence x n using the initial solution x naught and if I generalize this it can be written as x n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x n upon f prime of x n where n equals to 0, 1, 2, etc. So, as you can see this is the Newton Epson formula for solving the nonlinear equation. Here we are having one drawback of this method that is in the denominator of this term we are having a prime x n. If f prime x n become 0 for some n then the method fails and we cannot get the next iterations. Hence this is a drawback of the method and geometrically we can see this thing like this. If I am having a curve like this, so let us say this is the curve f x, this is again x axis, this is y axis. If I choose my initial guess at this point, so at this particular point the tangent will be parallel to the x axis and hence this tangent will never intersect the x axis ok and in this way I cannot get the next iteration or if it is very close to x naught let us here then what will happen this quantity will be very small and if it is very small this particular term will become very large and hence next iteration will diverge. So, this is one of the drawbacks of Newton's Epson method. Now, we can drive the Newton's Epson formula using the Taylor series expansion also. For this, we need to assume that f is twice differentiable. So, let f belongs to c to a b on a closed interval a to b. Second, let x naught be n approximation of the root f x equals to 0. Moreover, this approximation lie in the closed interval a b, then what we can do? If we have this x very close uh, this x not very close to x then I can write x minus x not is a, a small number let us say delta which is very small when compared to 1. So, it means x not is very close to x then if I write the Taylor series expansion of f x around f 0 then I can write f x equals to 
f of x naught plus x minus x naught into f prime of x naught plus x minus x naught whole square upon 2 f double prime j where j is a number between x and x naught. So, here j Now, you can see left hand side is f x and our given equation is f x equals to 0. So, left hand side is 0 equals to f x naught plus x minus x naught into f prime x naught. Now, as I told you x minus x naught is very small number. So, the square of this number will be more smaller and hence I can neglect the second order term here. So, I can say it is a approximate value. So, from this I can write x equals to x naught minus f x naught upon f prime x naught and this will be the next iteration of the Newton Raphson method. So, here you can see that we can generalize this formula again x n plus 1 equals to x n minus f of x n upon f prime x n. So, this is the again the formula for Newton action method for solving nonlinear equation. So, we start with an initial approximation x naught, then we find the approximation x 1 which is the x intercept of the tangent line to the graph of f at the point x naught f of x naught. Then similarly, we find x 2 which is x intercept of the tangent line to the graph of f at x 1 f of x 1. And finally, this method continued continue in this way for finding the approximate or numerical solution x star where the sequence x n is going to be converged. Let us take a very simple example. So, so the example is like that we are having a nonlinear equation f x equals to x square minus 4. We can manually see that the root of this nonlinear equation or second order polynomial is x equals to plus 2 and minus 2. So, let us check the root of this with an initial solution x naught equals to 6. Graphically, this will be a parabola like this. So, this is 2 and f 2, this is minus 2 and f minus 2. So, my x axis y axis and I am going to start So, this will be 2 and f 2, f 2 will become obviously 0 since it is a root. So, for this particular curve let us say I start with x equals to 6. So, this point is 6 0. So, if I draw a perpendicular line it intersect 
this curve at point 6 and 32. So, here x naught is 6, f x naught is 32. If I get f prime x, it is coming out to be twice of x and hence f prime of x naught is Twelve. So, Newton, using the Newton Raphson formula, I got x one equals to six minus thirty two upon twelve, and this is which is nearly about, uh, which is 10 upon 3. So, a bit bigger than 3. So, if it is 3, so we are having a this tangent will intersect here at 10 by 3 and f of 10 by 3. Again, I will draw a perpendicular line. Again, I will find the tangent on this point that is x 1 and f of x 1. This tangent line intersect x axis at x 2 and in this way again I will draw a perpendicular line. Again I will get a tangent line and in this way I will converge towards my exact solution in this particular example using the Newton Raphson techniques. Numerically, if I solve this problem, the iterations will be like this. The first x naught is 6, x 1 will be 3.33, x 2 will be 2.27 and then x 3 will become 2.01. So, we shows that Newton Epson method converge to root rapidly as with just 3 iterations. We are going to have the a value very close to the exact root of f x equals to x square minus 4. If we take a bit difficult example, let us say my function is a transcendental function which involve 10 hyperbolic term. So, f x equals to x into 10 hyperbolic x by 2 minus 1 equals to 0 is the equation. So, we will approximate the 0 of f using Newton Raphson method. So, we can see that this function at a point 1.5 is giving you the negative value and at f equals to 2 it is going to be a positive value. So, since f changes sign between 1.5 and 2, so there will be a ro 0 or root of f x equals to 0 in this interval. Calculate f prime x that will be 10 hyperbolic half x plus x times 1 by 2 1 upon cos hyperbolic half x whole square. So, if we start with initial solution 1.75, the first iteration gives the value of x 1. So, x 1 will become x naught minus f x naught upon f prime x naught which is 1.75 minus this number and it is coming out to be 1.547587. At 7. In the second iteration, x2 becomes 1.543407. Moving on in the same way, we get x3 as 1.543405, and finally, x4 as 1.543405. So, here you can see these two consecutive iterations are same, and hence we are having accuracy in the solution up to 6 decimal places. So, we are having several good thing about Newton action method. One of them is this method is quite simple in formulation as I have done in this lecture. In most of the cases, it is rapidly convergent. Moreover, in this method, it is easy to understand that when this process will behave well. 
Moreover, we are having certain numbers of drawback of this method. One of them I have told you earlier that if at any action a prime of x n becomes 0, then we cannot apply this method further. Moreover, if f of x has no real root, the method gives no indication about this and so iterations may simply oscillates. For example, take a very simple example to illustrate this particular drawback of Newton reaction method. So, let me take a simple function f of x equals to x square plus 2 and it is equals to 0. So, you can see that we do not have any real root of this equation and this equation can be drawn. as a parabola and this parabola never intersect the x axis. Now, if I take an initial solution here which is some positive value of x naught, then I will find out the tangent at this point. So, tangent line becomes like this and if this is x naught I get a x 1 which is a negative number. So, I start with a positive number I got a negative number in the next iteration. Now, at this particular point I need to find out tangent at this point of the curve I got this as x 2 which will become again a positive number. Similarly, at this point if I move find out a tangent I get another negative number as the next iterate it of x n and in this way I will al always oscillate between a positive value, negative value, positive value, negative value or sometimes two consecutive positive values and a negative values like that. And hence this for this particular problem Newton reaction method will never converge, it will always oscillates and, and the problem is that the equation is not having any real root and hence if we apply this particular method using our formula, we do not have any feeling of this thing. Now, another drawback of this particular method is generally we speak that if an equation is having several roots and you need to find out a specific root, so take an initial approximation close to that particular root. So, that method will converge towards that root. For example, if I take a simple transcendental equation f x equals to sin of x, then the curve of this function will be like this. In the for the positive values of x, now this is x equals to 0, this is pi, this is 2 pi. Now, if I take an initial approximation here which is let us say something around 2.45 pi. So, if my x naught is 2.4 times pi, then what will happen? This particular initial gas should converge to 2 pi. However, if we draw a tangent here according to the Newton reaction method, what I will get? I will get this as my next iterate and then if I draw a line here, this converge towards 0. So, I have taken an initial gas near to the root 2 pi, however, it will converge to the 0 using the Newton reaction formula. 
so sometimes it does not converge to the nearest root. Now, if we talk about the convergence of Newton Raphson method and as I commented in the beginning of this lecture that this method is having second order of convergence. So, let us prove it. So, suppose we are given a function f of x which is 0, let x r be the root of f x and x n is an estimate of x r such that the difference between x r and x n is very small that is less than 1. Then by the Taylor series expansion we can have the expansion of f around about the point x r and this will become f of x n plus x r minus x n f prime of x n plus x r minus x n whole square upon 2 f double prime of j. So, here j is a number between x r and x n. Now, the Newton Raphson formula tells us that f x n equals to f prime x n into x minus or x naught minus. So, if initial solution is x naught, so let us take the solution in n at iteration as x n. So, x n minus x n plus 1. Now, substitute this value of f x n in the above equation. So, here I got 0 equals to f dash x n this value of f x n from here into x n minus x n plus 1 plus x r minus x n f prime of x n plus the second order term of the Taylor series expansion. Now, you can see we can cancel f prime x n into x n because it is a positive from this term and negative from this term. So, what I will get? I will get x r minus x n into f prime x plus f double prime j. Now, you can see if I denote this particular term that as error sorry it will be n plus 1. So, error in n plus 1 iteration and then so f base x will become plus then this term will become error in n at iteration. So, e n square upon f double prime j upon 2. So, from here I can write that e n plus 1 equals to minus f double prime j upon twice of f 
prime x n into E n square. So, you can note it, it will be a constant. So, I can write E n plus 1 is proportional to E n square. So, it means that error will be a square of the error in the of the current iteration in the next iteration. So, if it is less than 1, it converts to the exact solution quadratically and hence I can say that Newton Epson is having the second order of convergence. So, in this lecture we have learned about Newton Epson method. First of all, we have derived this using a geometric illustration of this method, then we have drive it using Taylor series uh, approximate uh, Taylor series ex expansion of a function f x. Then what we have done? We have solved two examples using this method. One of them was quite simple, another one is having the transcendental equation. Finally, we have look on some drawback of this particular method. We have explain them graphically and we have proved that this method will be having quadratic converge, uh, convergence. Thank you very much.